So I'm live, very good. Well, uh, thanks folks. Uh, my name's Phil Robb, and we're gonna be talking about um, Open Daylight. Uh, for those of you that aren't familiar with the project, um, Open Daylight launched in April. Uh, our first code release is uh, in December. Um, and because of that, pretty much all of the developers are heads down, um, so I don't actually have a demo for you today. But I do want to kind of talk about the project and, uh, and take any questions. <coughs> so first off, um, just to kind of level set with everybody exactly what is SDN, um, and it really depends on, uh, on, on who you are and how you're looking at SDN. Um, you know, fundamentally, it's about software-defined networking, um, but it's many different things to many different people. That includes network virtualization in the cloud, dynamic service chains for service providers, um, dynamic traffic engineering, dynamic network configuration, uh, network function virtualization, uh, and many other use cases. And in the end, you know, networking is just really a mind-boggling, complex thing. Um, and it's been that way over the last couple of decades. <coughs> but there are some commonalities, right? It's all about bringing programmability to the network, um, radically increasing flexibility. We've lived in an environment where needing to go to every switch and program every switch for its control plane functions has just been the norm, and that makes networks very, very fragile. So moving that configuration, um, both the time and the software, to someplace centralized is a key. Right? There's lots of different good ideas on how to do this, and we're really, really young. Right? I mean, we've watched Neutron, as far as that goes, you know, evolve as quickly as it has. There are lots of different ways of doing this and to bring more programmability to the network. Um, so for us, as, as, as part of Open Daylight, making the project modular, flexible, and evolvable over time as we figure these things out is really key because doing this type of network programming and uh, having such a programmable network, we are so early into it, we're not quite sure how best to do it. <coughs> so being able to have a tool that can do that is, is, is really a lot behind the architecture of the project. Um, so what is Open Daylight? Um, it's a community, it's an open source project, it's not a company. Um, so, you know, it's very similar to OpenStack as far as being just an open source community to do a focused uh, technical activity. That activity being software-defined networking. So we want to create this evolvable SDN platform um, with some common abstractions and capabilities northbound of that controller or southbound of Neutron. Um, and Neutron is obviously a very important use case for us. Um, we want to do intermediation between those northbound APIs and the southbound protocols that um, can be implemented down into the network, uh, provide programmable network services, um, create network applications, and whatever else we need to do to actually make this work. So this is the basic framework of uh, most SDN controllers and specifically of, of Open Daylight. So at the bottom, you've got this set of um, southbound protocols. Uh, one of the most important is OpenFlow. Uh, for those that are following the software-defined networking space, OpenFlow is the key protocol um, and is currently relatively young and is evolving pretty quickly. Um, we have a service abstraction layer that is a key, unique feature within the Open Daylight controller in that it presents the capabilities of those southbound protocols in a consistent manner to the northbound services and the northbound applications that ride above this controller. Um, in the center, you've got core network services that are done for any uh, network controller. These include things like um, uh, topology management, statistics management of the different switches in the network and so forth. Um, there's a RESTful API that then is exposed to uh, the northbound applications. So who is Open Daylight? Um, again, similar to OpenStack, it's a foundation and a nonprofit organization, and these are some of the corporate um, uh, members of that nonprofit to help facilitate the community but it's really an open source community. So, um, you know, like any other project, uh, it's, it's all about whoever shows up to, uh, to contribute code and to participate. 
We currently have, actually this is a little bit of a dated slide, we've got well over 100 active contributors and we're running somewhere around 120 to 130 commits a week. Um, so again, for a project that started in April, um, we've got a lot of momentum and it's going really well. So what is Open Daylight delivering? Um, so our first multi-release, again, is in December. Uh, there are 12 sub-projects. So in Open Daylight, as you can see, it was, it's really formed as, um, it's, uh, it's mostly Java-based. Uh, OSGI bundles is how we're putting things together. And there are 12 separate um, projects underneath the whole umbrella. Uh, there's the core controller and then a variety of others, and I'll, I'll, I'll show you those in a little bit. Um, but you know, we want to deliver a, 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 a single coherent thing, so we're in the middle of doing uh, full system and integration testing across those 12 projects and delivering that, again, as a unified uh, entity in December. The code name for that is Hydrogen, and specifically the date is December 9th. From a governance standpoint, um, again, your typical open source project, membership is open to all. Um, it's got business leadership uh, with a board of directors over that nonprofit organization. Uh, there's a technical steering committee that guides all of the technical aspects of the project uh, for technical selection, project selection, you know, arbitration of decisions, and so forth. Fully meritocratic in a technical sense um, and uh, uh, totally transparent with, uh, with your typical type of project lifecycle management. Here's a little bit uh, tighter view of the architectural framework. Um, and again, so across the top layer, you can see the different types of northbound applications we're expecting to be uh, uh, part of the integration effort with, with Open Daylight over time uh, to uh, cloud platforms such as, uh, such as OpenStack as well as CloudStack, um, level four through seven services, uh, you know, your classic GUI and so forth. You can see in the middle the different types of base services, topology manager, statistics manager, uh, the switch and device manager, as well as uh, lease path forwarding and so forth. Uh, and then there are a set of extended services um, that are also part of, the, uh, part of this first release around doing virtual network, uh, doing overlays, uh, traffic redirection, storage services, and so forth. And then again, a variety of southbound protocols down underneath the controller. From a project lifecycle standpoint, um, again, we've pretty much taken the Apache model, very similar to OpenStack, where we'll have projects that are proposed. Um, they typically go into incubation stage um, if they are accepted. Uh, and thus far, we actually haven't had anything not accepted um, as far as a project goes. Um, when we first kicked off, we also had a bootstrap phase because we had some pretty significant and mature pieces of code that were contributed. So to get those as part of the project early on, we had a bootstrap phase as well. So about half those 12 projects are currently in bootstrap, and the other half are in incubation. From there, once we go through our first release, we will start to have identified you know, the projects as being more uh, stable and mature. So we'll have a variety of those uh, actually moving to the mature state, um, and then eventually into core, right, where core is, you know, an absolutely necessary and uh, essential feature within the controller um, for it to really exist. So again, a somewhat typical project lifecycle that's being maintained. <coughs> so from a release standpoint specifically, these are the components that are in this hydrogen release, this first release we're doing in December. Again, obviously a core controller. Um, in addition, we have virtual tenant network. Um, that was contributed by NEC. Uh, we have a, we've decided to do a set of Yang tools um, to, to generate uh, consistent data models uh, that will be used both for the northbound generation of the northbound APIs as well as for the southbound. Um, there's an OpenFlow protocol library as well as an OpenFlow plugin. Um, the protocol library was implementing uh, the 1.3 spec of OpenFlow and the, uh, the, the, the OpenFlow plugin is really built, we kind of refactored everything, realizing that we need to be able to support multiple versions of OpenFlow as different switches are um, coming out and uh, are compatible with different versions of OpenFlow. We need to be able to support 
the new versions of OpenFlow going to some switches and the older versions of OpenFlow going to existing switches. So having a method of being able to both quickly support new implementations or new versions of OpenFlow as well as supporting existing versions was important. So creating that type of a plugin so that we could do that was you know, one of the key attributes of this, uh, this first release. Um, there's an affinity metadata service that is really good at doing policy management, identifying nodes, groups of nodes, and, and the policies that, uh, that will work in between those. Um, Defense for All is actually a, uh, a, uh, a denied, distributed denial of service uh, attack application to uh, detect and mitigate uh, denial of service attacks. Uh, BGPLS uh, and PSEP for protocols, uh, as well as o OS OBSDB um, for uh, configuration of virtual switches and, and, and uh, open B switch. Um, the LISP flow mapping for doing location identifier separation. Um, which is a, a good protocol for uh, service chaining, uh, as well as SNMP for SDN. Um, and this is doing, uh, as it says, just doing basic management programming through SNMP, uh, which is a pretty, you know, pretty common denominator for, uh, for legacy devices out there. And then last but not least is uh, distributed overlay virtual ethernet, or open dove. And that's an overlay technology that uh, is particularly applicable um, to OpenStack environments. Um, so this is the whole release, right? And so again, as a Java-based uh, application set, um, if you go and download the code or if you, if you were to acquire everything that was possible for this particular version, this is what the picture would look like. But again, it's really built to be modular and pluggable, so you don't have to have all of these features. Um, implemented all at the same time, and actually we don't expect most folks to have all of these features um, selected at, at the same time. So we've got a base edition where it's really, you know, prototyping, uh, educational environments, simple, simple OpenFlow uh, SDN controller is really what this is about. <coughs> We're currently under discussions to, to, to add OS, uh, OVSDB rather, to this. Um, we're not quite sure if we're going to put OVSDB into this base edition or not. It kind of makes sense because, again, with virtual switches, being able to configure them to run OpenFlow through it in, a, uh, in an educational or prototype environment kind of makes sense. Um, there's a service provider edition uh, where we're bundling together uh, the affinity service the, uh, the LISP service, as well as SNMP, uh, BGPLS, PSEP, and, uh, and the LISP uh, protocol, as well as the denial of service uh, application. Then there's a virtualization edition, which would probably have the most uh, applicability to folks in the OpenStack arena, um, with the VTN coordinator, uh, the denial, denial of service uh, tool, as well as the OpenStack Neutron um, plug-in, uh, and that's going directly to an OpenStack service. So we, we want to work uh, as, part of the, uh, as part of the ICE house um, rev. We're, we're working on a, on a protocol set that is basically implementing the exact same APIs for um, Neutron in the REST API for Open Daylight. So it'll be a straight pass through from Neutron down into uh, the Open Daylight SDN controller. <coughs> and then either the uh, Either the Dove Overlay Manager or uh, VTN, the uh, Virtual Tenant Network Slicing, uh, will be one of the two uh, common um, network virtualization technologies that are used underneath OpenStack. So uh, uh, again, open source project, we're always looking for more folks to come and, uh, and come play in our sandbox. Um, if you want to get involved or you want to uh, look up more information on Open Daylight, come take a look at the wiki. Um, all of the documentation for uh, development, downloading the code uh, is all there. Um, right at the very beginning of that, uh, that wiki is a getting started section. Go take a look at that. It'll show you how to get the code, how to get involved, um, and how to, bring the, how to bring it up and, uh, and, and get it into your development environment. Uh, Lists.opendaylight.org have uh, all of the mailing lists uh, to which there is one called Discuss which is the most popular. Um, there's also an IRC channel, which is on Freenode. 
uh, called Open Daylight. Uh, again, a very active community, lots of folks on the mailing list, lots of folks on the IRC channel. So there's, it's very, very easy to get started. Um, we're very accommodating. We want more people to be working with this code and to, uh, to come, uh, come, play, uh, come play with us in this project. So uh, it's very easy to do that. Um, and with that, I think that's it. Um, the standard site for, uh, for uh, the nonprofit is uh, opendaylight.org. So, uh, and if you want more information on, uh, on uh, that nonprofit, uh, just send mail to info at opendaylight.org. Um, thanks very much.